on this. Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Justin Tadlock, a developer advocate uh, through Automatic on the WordPress.org project. Um, Co-hosted with uh, Ryan. He's we're on this we're on the same team, so doing the same stuff. Um, like we today, we're going to just talk about uh, issues, pain points, or you know even things we enjoy about. Uh, migrating short codes, widgets, uh, whatever you may have from the uh, to to a block. Um, and this is Panther. He he joins with us uh, all the time. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be the big topic. Uh, we could talk about uh, you know if you have issues with documentation, like where the you know what are we missing uh hopefully we can and this is 20 uh, really uh cats are going to be all around today um sorry uh yeah so if there's issues with documentation like tell us about them like we want to fix that we want to address it uh or just bring up examples you want to get feedback from either one of us or somebody else in the audience um so uh yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll, we're going to skip through like all the introductions because we've got a pretty big crowd today. Um, so, uh, big thing, uh, anybody have uh, like questions they want to start with? Like, I mean, just tell us about your experiences. And if you're not comfortable like speaking on camera, that's okay. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and I'll, I, I'll ask your question for you. Uh, you can, you can message me directly if, if that's more comfortable for you or whatever works. So feel free to ask away. Yeah. All right. No questions yet. I'm always yeah. happy to speak up if no one wants to jump in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah, we know you're. That's that's why I enjoy having Nick around. <laughs> Go ahead. He ain't scared to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't necessarily a, a question, but it's more of a comment. Um, when you're transitioning from like short codes or widgets to blocks, uh, at least I know for myself, you need to create or one of the goals is to create an interface in the editor that has toggle switches, has date pickers, has you know components that maybe you didn't have in a short code. And what I got hung up on when I first started doing that transition is thinking that I need to build all those things myself. And you don't for the most part. And so like the component reference in the block editor handbook is great because it has all the different components that you might want to use, toggles and drop downs and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that isn't handled very well in the block editor handbook currently is components that are also that are underneath the uh, block editor package or some of the other packages that you can also use. In the handbook, they're like pulled in like in a convoluted way. So even though that there's actually some good documentation on GitHub for it, it doesn't actually appear in the handbook and it can be kind of like hard to navigate. Now I'm very comfortable with just going to GitHub and finding all that information. But I think that as we look forward into this 2023, improving the handbook in a way that some of these components that really make it, once you understand how to use the components, which granted is a hurdle, but once you understand how to use the components, being able to really easily access a directory with all the components, have the documentation there in one place, I think would be an aspirational uh, good improvement to the handbook. Obviously there's a lot of work there, but um, components are like the key to transitioning <laughs> to, to from short codes to, to blocks, so. Yeah. This might be a good opportunity on that point to mention the storybook tool. Yeah. That all the, all the uh, Gutenberg components having like an interactive page. Um, it's not well linked actually from the handbook to the storybook page. Yeah. I, I just dropped a link to it in chat there. 
um, if if everyone if if you're interested for the uh, the storybook instance, and that's a really great way, great way of uh, playing around with the components and seeing what props are available yeah. and what what you can do with each yeah. one. And then you can copy and paste the code from the storybook into your project, you know, with all the settings that you want or default settings. Yeah. Uh, Michael, you did you make a ticket the other day to link the docs to the storybook page, like the component docs to the storybook page? I have um, created a preliminary PR, just doing uh, a, a kind of a proof of concept, linking a handful of reference pages from the handbook to the corresponding pages in the storybook, just to get some feedback, you know, of like layout and positioning of of putting this thing in the page. Yeah, so I remember. To take yeah. a look and comment on that PR. Um, let me grab the PR and stick it in the comments. Yeah. Or in the chat, rather. Bear with yeah. me. Yeah, I think I remember when I first started. Uh, you know, I, I just jumped into uh, the actual code Gutenberg repository. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, I had trouble understanding some of the components and how they how it all worked. Uh, and I kind of knew about the storybook tool, but. I didn't really know how it worked. Um, like at that point, I didn't know how how it fit together. I just thought it was like some neat thing that I didn't know about. Oh, uh, but I didn't know how to use. Um, and I think yeah, I'd like kind of bringing the docs and that tool together um, can kind of bridge some of the like gaps or maybe ha help people have those you know light bulb moments uh, where things come together a bit more. Um. <clears throat> But yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I'll be honest. I still go to. Uh, I know we work on the handbook, but I still go to the code. Uh, so, you know, I feel like we need, it does need to improve. Um, yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely see what you're saying, Nick, about the discoverability. Um, because it's the document the documentation is great as long as you know where to look for it if that makes sense mm -hmm. like let, let, like if i want to work on the rich text component which i mean for a lot of block developers they would use that for a number of things they have to know that that's not actually in the components that's in the block editor package right so knowing where that is is the hard part and i remember the first few times i ever really dove into gutenberg and tried to like figure out like you know there's just package after package after package and figuring out where that stuff lives so uh, it is there's definitely some work being done in 2023 to improve the handbook in the sense of discoverability. Um, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough nut to crack because we have lots of packages and lots of, lots of components that don't always live in the components package. They live in various places, but um, yeah. yeah. The one thing I just wanted to get across is that like handbooks going to take some time to get modified or whatever, but just for those that didn't know that all these components exist, check out the packages. Like I, over the weekend, I was playing around with uploading media and there's a component for that. Mm -hmm. And like, once you know that the component exists and you can modify it slightly the way you want it, it's great. And you didn't have to do anything. You just drop in the component, change a few things and you're ready to go. Does a lot of complicated things under the hood that you don't need to worry about. Yep. You know, so just... Uh, <laughs> paying attention to all the packages and do a good search before you start trying to implement something yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I would definitely agree. Um, yeah. If you just take some time, you know, once a week or so and like, just look through the packages, like you don't have to study all the code, just like, no, okay, here's where this lives. Um, that goes a long ways toward just, uh, yeah. Knowing where things are. That's the big thing. Um, and what, knowing how what, to find them. For sure. One tool that I've I've found that was very helpful for me. Now I'm I'm very comfortable doing this, so maybe folks are are not. But adding the uh, re, the 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 React and Redux um, Chrome add-ons, uh, well, actually in your inspector um, controls, you'll you can actually inspect and get the component name of something that you're looking at. So if you're comfortable doing that. That at least would give you the name of the thing that you're looking for. So then you can you 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 can do a search in GitHub or in the in the handbook to find it. Because some of the some of the component names may not match what you're thinking they're supposed to be doing, or they're being used for something else, or they're wrapped up inside of another component that's named something else. And so so that's a that's a roundabout way of getting there. My camera just went all blurry. I don't know what that was about, but anyhow. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I see somebody, Jacques Surveyor, has asked, said that it's 
tough to find good tutorials on FSE yes. and blocks. <clears throat> and then Victor just above has said that he's had a good, great experience on the uh, with the courses on Learn WordPress. And there is an introductory course. Um, I'm just post putting the link in now. If you're just getting started with block development, there's this course on mm -hmm. Learn. Word there's also um, the the developer blog, which is still technically in beta, but and there's new content being added all the time. Um, historically, in WordPress, having tutorial uh, content um, has been as part of WordPress.org has always been sort of difficult uh, because we don't sort of link out to third parties. Those those tutorials aren't necessarily always kept up up to date. So this is a new initiative. Well, I mean, how was it now? A year, half a year, or something like that. It's been around a little while. And we're slowly adding adding uh, content to it, but this this is going to be more an official resource of tutorial content. Um, obviously, we've got twenty years of WordPress to build tutorials <laughs> for. So if anyone wants to help, uh, that would be great. But um, so this is a place to 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 keep an eye on. Um, Justin just wrote a really awesome article on intrinsic intrinsic design, which I need to read because I don't really fully understand what that means yet. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, there's a lot of great content on there. Yeah, we're we're still all learning what it means. I think. Um, yeah, that was really fun to explore uh, because uh, there there's a lot I didn't like just understand uh, myself, even coming from a design background. Um, but yeah, that's not really uh, less less to do with block uh, block development than uh, uh, theme than it is theme development. So. Um, I do see uh, that Lisa Snyder had, had a question. Uh, I actually uh, had this very same uh, question come up uh, like via the support forms the other day. Um, she asked, if I want to display next and previous posts in the same category, post tag or other tax taxonomy term, do I need to create a custom block or is there a way to make use of the next and previous blocks? Um, yes, uh, you can use a filter, I think, uh, it was, uh, but it was kind of a big workaround, uh, but I can, uh, I can look that up and share that specific code with you after the show. I'll be happy to do that. Um, cause I, I wrote it to help somebody, uh, but we also have a ticket, uh, on the Gutenberg repository to, uh, to enable that it's a feature with the the PHP on the PHP side, the function. Um, so it just needs to be integrated into the block. Um, there is a ticket and I'll see if I can find that. Um, but yeah, um, you don't need to create a whole block for it. Um, you can, but uh, there, you can get around it. There's a the query loop block automatically have next and previous links. Uh, it's within the same category. That's the missing part. Like, uh, it's not the query loop. Uh, it's the next and previous post. So that's actually, is that part of the, uh, it's not the multiple post page, like the archive type pages. This is for single posts, uh, from what I understand from this oh, question. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. I'm misunderstanding the question. Um, uh, yeah. A singular post. Uh, mm. yeah. Oh, uh, exact same question. Um, yeah. Uh, she confirmed that um yeah, also, oh, sorry ahead. just um just uh at least i sort of had a follow-up question about like when 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 do you need a custom block versus uh the block variation or or whatever i think that's a that's a as, as with most things development the answer is depends <laughs> uh, uh and uh i would say like for me as soon as there's something as soon as it becomes more work or more awkward for me to extend one of the core blocks, that's when I start looking at a custom block. Um, for example, back in my agency days, we we had, um, but uh, the button block was always a bit of the, uh, you know, the bane of our existence because there's so many options and the designs never accommodated for all the options that it provided. So instead of trying to filter away all the options, we just wrote our own. Um, and so that's a good, because it's less work to, to do that than it is to undo all the, all the things that are there. So as soon as it doesn't do what you need it to do and you can't simply extend it using, you know, one of the various block filters, maybe that's when I would start looking at a custom block, I think. Um, yeah, I'd add to that for me, for me personally, it's more like, uh, is this more PHP or more JavaScript? Uh, if I could do it all in PHP, I'm just happy to, even if it's a little more work, I'll sometimes uh, lean toward 
the PH, <laughs> PHP uh, solution. Uh, but yeah, so sometimes that means not creating custom blocks uh, when it would really make sense to do so. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another question here from Andrew. Uh, does the WP core team plan on spearheading any kind of initiative to standardize how plugin developers should create their admin settings? Since we all since we all have these React components now, should we be using these for our plugin UI settings? Um, I don't know if there's a an initiative in place to standardize that, but I mean, we've had sort of the same look and feel for the admin for uh, quite some time. And I think it's best practice to try to match the admin experience that WordPress uh, provides now that we have all these components and everything. I think in my opinion, yes, you should use them. You should try to match them as much as possible. Um, it actually makes your life easier because all the CSS is baked in, all, all the functionality is there. It does the majority of what you're trying to do. If you don't have a if you don't have a control that you need, there are building blocks to be able to create one. For example, there for a long time there wasn't like a color wheel, like a color picker. So there was like a color component, and then there was like the there's there's all the tools that that you could put together to create your own, but they were all they all came from core. You're gonna save a lot of time, I think and a lot of engineering cycles by not trying to create your own UI, just use what's there. But yeah. I, but again, I don't think that's a hard and fast rule. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. And, but I mean, yeah. if you really Since want to create your own UI, you can. Yeah. I guess. Since we're talking about like specifically admin settings pages here, like I think it'd be worthwhile to have uh, like some tutorial, um, maybe get Ryan to write it or, or show it on video. Uh, uh, how can you build a settings page using these components? Like it's kind of like you can jump to blocks and that's all done. You have your whole page already. You just build the block like on the, when you're talking about the side editor or post editor, but what if you're building a settings page itself uh, and you want to use some of these components? Um, well, that would... funny. You should mention that. I okay. think I have one. On. I'm pretty sure I have one on my YouTube channel somewhere. I'll dig well, it up. Yeah. But... That would be uh, interesting. Uh, to, yeah, I need to watch that if you have it. So, um, oh yeah, I'll find it. But yeah, I think you should definitely start trying to build out those types of admin pages. I think in the future, relatively soon, we're going to start to get some guidance on what they should look like. Um, but if you've already built your admin page in using WordPress components, you know if the admin gets updated in a year or two it will be easy to modify, you know, to match the design. Um, I'm building all my plugins now with, with the React components. So it's- uh, Yeah, I think anything you, you can do to learn the React components now will benefit you in the long run. Yeah. Um, but it's just in terms of min settings pages, like I mean, it's simple still to build, you know, use add settings page, reg, uh, mm -hmm. add option, uh, whatever the- uh, the function calls are uh, that exists, but yeah, I mean, I want to build everything like with the components we have. Just like uh, I don't know if some of you know about heard of like the fields API from like years ago. I think there's still work going on with it, um, but I like just have that standardization across all of WordPress. Um, like you don't need to like. I remember a time when we were building with a widgets API, we were building, you know, settings and then themes had their own thing on hmm. top of the settings and, or, you know, then you had the customizer. It's just uh dashboard widgets uh, also. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm hoping we get to a place where all those things, there's just one way to do them. Um, and that will make all of our lives <laughs> much easier. Yeah, for sure. And if you do use the built-in stuff, if something changes in core, like we, like I've seen, we've seen some, you know, there's been some, some posts on make that were pressed to about like revamping the UI, re, like revamping the look and feel of the admin experience. So if you're using the baked in components that come with core and then they make changes, you're going to get, you're going to benefit from all those changes. You're not going to have to go back as a plugin developer a year later and rebuild everything to match the UI. It'll just in, inherit those changes. This is a pet peeve of mine, but in the WordPress admin where you can change like the color scheme, mm -hmm. it annoys me when like I have my 
color scheme set and then like third-party plugins don't match that color mm -hmm. scheme um but when you use wordpress components they do <laughs> so. yeah. well there you go that's that demonstrates the point right there, <laughs> exactly. for, for, for sure mm -hmm. yeah and i knew in the past there were like if you wanted to introduce you needed to introduce something custom custom to a settings page that wordpress just didn't have styles for there was not an easy way to even get the color like if it got ever, ever if wordpress updated its color you need to update your plugin um you know to because um like i don't know we have css variables now or properties or custom properties mm -hmm. yeah so i mean there was a time when that didn't exist so um as much it was a dark easier. time it's a dark time yeah. in the web dark yeah time. Uh, all right, we do have a couple of things in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm just. <clears throat> so. Victor is asking about um, my big question on, on, on admin is the borderline case of admin slash user slash app editing custom field types and custom fields and blocks without having to resort to a vendor lock in plugin. And possible non CPT approaches to content modeling. That's a big question on my mind. Um, sorry, Victor, I'm not sure I understand the question. It feels yeah. like you want to use custom post meta without like a plugin that provides the interface. Is that? Uh, yeah, uh, if I yeah. may uh, interject, um, I, this may be beyond the scope of this meeting. I don't know. I've been look, looking at a lot of your uh, materials, Ryan, and um, uh, basically, um, uh, I feel that content modeling is part of, if we're not in Kansas anymore, content modeling is a big part of making any, any web app, right? Mm -hmm. So I must have content types and I must have uh, custom fields. Uh, how does that fit in? Now, I, I'm noticing I can do stuff like make a reusable block or even my own plugin in React to edit um i don't want to do anything sui generis i don't want to invent the wheel but neither do i want to go outside of gutenberg and um i don't necessarily want to depend on php as back end for my modeling also so it's a big question i have um as i say it may be beyond the scope right now but but um I, you know i'm in a position where uh, i'm very you know i feel quite proficient in react but not in WordPress. So I'm, I've only had a few years of WordPress. So I'm sure my questions are going to be answered in time. But um, WordPress is almost becoming, after examining all the full stack frameworks that are coming out, um, WordPress is going to be my full stack framework. So it's like, I just want to run that by you because you may not be aware that there are people uh, like like me that that are looking at that. Um, um, in other words, get the benefit of WordPress as a no code uh, editor um, mm -hmm. for users. Um, but I must have the possibility of editing content types and and stuff. And um, I was depending on one um, plugin that I won't mention the name. Uh, and what uh, and they had a blocks that you could uh, you know you could make dynamic blocks easily in a no code way and I, I could marshal my data um and then they put out a, a notice saying okay well gutenberg doesn't know where it's going so we're gonna wait we're not gonna do any new development anymore and so you know when you pay a yearly subscription <laughs> to something like that you know so i uh, you know, I know React. I can, I can, I can program. So I'm just presenting my problem. I'm not pretending an answer to this, mm -hmm. but that's really a necessity for me to move forward on these points. I think that making my own plugins, and um, very excited about um, um, uh, uh, various different plugins. Uh, WP Engine has some stuff. You know, um, open source. So you know. Uh, I'm going to be moving in that direction. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions in that direction. I'm going to make some projects and try to exemplify this as time goes by. But mm -hmm. uh, it's really um, 
it was a deal breaker with me with with WordPress a few years ago, but um, I'm really excited about what WordPress is doing and attempting to do um, in a very democratic way, really making uh, tech, web app tech uh, available to, to, to small businesses and organizations. And um, I'm going to move forward on this point. If anybody has any anything to um, suggest to me or any paths uh, that I should examine, please uh, let me know. Otherwise, in a similar chat to this one, maybe I'll present some more uh, specific questions. Sorry for taking up your time. No, no, that's why we're here. Um, it's, to it's totally fine. Um, yeah, that 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 you that was that's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot there. Um, yeah. You can definitely. I mean, what from what I'm sort of hearing you describe, it's all possible. Um, it's just whether or not you want to write your own code to do it. I think at this point, and then there is the issue of vendor lock-in with plugins and themes and all those things. But um, like being able to manage your own data, you can do that. Being able to to register custom post types that also have data points associated with them, completely doable. Um, and then you can write the blocks the, for, to 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 uh, retrieve that post meta and also write back to that post meta right inside the block editor. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. There's definitely, I think WordPress has the tools in place to be able to do everything that you're wanting to do. I think maybe the missing piece is that no code aspect, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly. Um, and then you would be looking at sort of some third party um, uh, plugins and and things to to be able to manage that um, without having to write your own code to to do so. I hope that helps. I don't know. Yeah, as Ryan says, pretty much anything's possible with WordPress. But I think to a certain extent, WordPress does tie you into its data structure, in that everything is either a post or post meta in terms of content. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you, anything you want to do, you have to kind of shoehorn into it being a post or post meta, though you've got the option of creating your own database tables. There's a, a data yeah. API mm -hmm. in WordPress where you can create custom tables in addition to what is it, 11 tables that the standard install. Uh, Sounds creates. about right. Hmm. I have no idea if this is related at all, but I'm going to drop this in the chat. This was an interesting experiment people were doing with Gutenberg. It might not be relevant at all, but it, when you in you when you were talking, it made me think of this. Um, oh, that's people are doing interesting experiments with yeah. pushing Gutenberg to the next level. That's pretty neat. And and that's that's sort of the one of the powerful things about this. Like I've in my previous life as an as an agency guy, I, I we built something internally like this for a client that was it was like an it was an email and an a, a e newsletter builder and uh, we just ingested all all the packages from from Gutenberg and we were able to build up this amazing interface with l very little work on our end <laughs> because we had everything are already built so yeah this is really cool thanks for sharing that Nick I was gonna say, did I miss the link, or what was that? It's uh, oh, I dropped uh, in the uh, chat. Yes. Yeah, I see it now. So, uh, yeah, I think earlier uh, we had a couple of people mention uh, early, early in the chat that they're just uh, still early in the uh, block uh, learning process. Um, so like um just a question to to y'all have y'all tried just to create block package uh, and walk through the uh i have a job interview today uh, <laughs> okay uh, did, uh have you walked through the uh, create block package and like the tutorial uh there i have a job interview today okay okay uh steve uh, i i just muted steve there steve i don't think you realized you were on well, good luck on your job interview. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, like, feedback from, like, people just getting started. Yeah, there's the uh, link in the chat from uh, from Ryan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, we're getting feedback from Lisa in the chat. Um, oh, yeah, the... Uh, 
Yeah, was that the uh, two uh, the Learn WordPress tutorial that uh, Michael did uh, from earlier? Somebody mentioned. I don't know. Um. Yeah, so I mean, did y'all have? Uh, I mean, did you run into any issues, pain points with just like getting up and started, like with uh, with just the basic uh, tutorial on what you know what through the uh, create block package? Um, like I, I avoided it for like almost the entire time it existed uh, when I started. Uh, it's like I just want to use my own like my known build process. Uh, like I, I'd. Like I spent like an entire year like developing my own build process. Like this is before like you know block development was around. I was like, I'm really happy with this. Like me and like a few other people. I was like, I don't have to think about it. Like I can just type a couple of commands, it's done. And like now all of a sudden there's a whole new thing. And I I really didn't want to do it at all. Uh but it was uh but once I like made that leap. Like, I was like, oh, this is so simple. Like, and well, at least the build process is uh, not the, you know, I, I need to learn JavaScript deeply aspect of it. But, um, yeah, so I'm mean, just, uh, that's just a great getting started process. Uh, if, if anybody's kind of shied away from it, um, it's not too bad. It might be worth mentioning also that you don't actually need to use React and all this build processes to create a block. There's oh, no. a series of tutorial on uh, Learn WordPress by Jonathan Bossinger on how to build a block without React. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find a link. Yeah, uh, yeah I've actually uh, built one from you know vanilla JavaScript before. I feel like most of our docs, though, um, are they're going to uh, you're going to want to learn some basic React um, just to be able to read. Uh, through the uh, default uh, core code and or you know read through a lot of the documentation um, but yeah just getting started uh, and I cannot remember offhand I'm sure I wrote about it uh, when I was uh, formerly a writer at WP Tavern I, I'm almost positive I linked to that plugin in some article uh, about that experience uh, there's somebody who has a block plugin on uh, WordPress.org that was in vanilla JavaScript. It wasn't like minified or like I couldn't find the, you know, the code was all there. I was like, oh, this is great. Like I, like I knew enough JavaScript to like understand what his code does and I could replicate it for my own plugin. Um, and I would like to see, yeah, uh, yeah, more, a little bit more of that just as a transitioning uh, thing for people who have more of a PHP background. Um, and or just a really low level like JS uh, background, like I did. Uh, so. All right. Uh, so, uh, any cool blocks that anybody's built recently? Uh, have it, or I knew like our topic is short codes and widgets to uh, migrating them to blocks. Has anybody done that or just any blocks recently? They've just enjoyed building. All right. They're hitting a quiet spot here now. Um, If you want to, I could show you a recent block I did uh, share. Anybody yeah, let's see else? it. All right. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let me. I'll hit share screen. Uh, let's see desktop. All right. Uh, let's see if I can move some of this uh, Zoom stuff out of the way. All right. Um. Yeah. So everybody see my screen good. Yeah. Yes. All right. So. Uh, originally, this was, I mean, this is an older plugin. Like, it's literally just a shortcut, like, clean my archives, uh, if you could set it up. Um, and it just lists your site archives. I only have, like, four posts on this demo install. Uh, pretty simple, like, concepts. Um, 
and yeah so like uh like a professional project lately i've been uh, i've cr created a uh, block from this and uh, yeah so uh how can i minimize yeah i can't see half my our browser there we go um yeah so you know I, instead of the like plain short code you have like an actual block you can see in the editor i'm just so happy like we're at this point and like uh wordpress's existence um because short code is kind of uh sucked you know from a user experience standpoint um and like uh this was like the very first uh, one of the very first blocks i started on like two years ago and like I picked like the most advanced thing I could do, like uh, get data from the database, and I had no clue how to do it. Um, like, and you have these like get entity type, and uh, Ryan actually knows this stuff more by heart, uh, probably. Um, but yeah, so this short code you can you know break it down to the year, which there's no post in 2023. Um, actually, you can break it down by a month too. Um, yeah. And my favorite thing is actually this tool panel. Um, I love building those. So I can just I love things. it too. Yeah. Is it experimental? Are you using the experimental one? Experimental yeah, it computer? probably it probably is. <laughs> it's <laughs> giving you a hard time. Never mind. I, I don't care. Uh, I can hide things and get them <laughs> out of the it, way. So it's, it's awesome. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I just uh, for me, I, I'm just super excited about like the, these are ideas like what we can do in the block editor these are not new ideas we've been wanting like this ui representation of like the front end for since you know everything began um so i'm just like really super excited about being able to like go on this journey learn uh how to build these things um it's a little slower uh, the, uh now than i feel like it was uh, years ago when i uh was just a young developer <laughs> uh and no responsibilities but to learn how to code and could stay up 20 hours a night uh, you know a day but um yeah um but uh i think i only have three or four block plugins now and so i'm ready i'm finally ready to like you know publish this uh here hopefully soon um like this has been yeah like i said i think i started on it two years ago and then i stopped um so I, I last week I get kind of put some finishing touches on it, um, and uh, but yeah, don't start with like the most advanced uh, thing you can think of. Um, start with something simple and fun. Uh, I always think like that for me, like uh, like I built this random like footer message generator. Uh, like like just get back to the basics and do something really fun that may not be popular. Nobody really needs it. Uh, and, but it's just something to learn the basics, um, and then move on, uh, to your more advanced stuff after that. Um, there's a question from Lisa in the chat. Um, is there a problem using multiple query loop mm. blocks on a page? Um, I don't think so. Be and the reason I, I don't think so is because traditionally, um, if you're building a theme, there's a very good chance that you could have a sidebar that's got three different widgets that those three widgets do three different queries. Then you've got your main query on the page. And then maybe you've got like a slider that shows certain, like, I think, I think, I think it's more of a question of like, is your site set up okay to handle queries? Are they cached properly? Do you have object caching? Do you have, uh, you know, page caching? I think if you were to put a thousand blocks on there, uh, that might slow things down. But that if you're doing a thousand queries on a page, you, that's going to get slowed down anyways. So yeah. I think you're okay um, within reason. It's the same. It's the same same idea of saying, should I do like a minus one query where I get all the posts? And it's okay if you don't have ten thousand posts. Um, if you've got five, you'll get five. If you got ten thousand, you'll crash your site. <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, so no, I I think you're probably okay um, within within sort of some reason reasonable expectations. Yeah, it's a great uh, question though. Really great question. Yeah, actually, uh, when I was building that block, I like 
uh and the and the admin i uh was loading all posts like my on my original demo site i had like a few hundred and that was like mm -hmm. taking forever to load so i did put in that specific case a limit on what uh, the number that will show up in the admin or, or in the editor um even if it doesn't it's not limited on the front end because i realized that was a bit of a problem uh, but yeah, as far as multiple queries, I think also how many pages would you actually have multiple queries on? Like a lot of times you might see that on the front page, um, but on like your single post page or, you know, just regular pages, uh, you're not usually running a ton of queries. I don't, I think you have like just those few instances where it's not really a problem, um, especially if you have good uh, caching. Um, yeah. Like if you're running a sidebar on every single page, that cat that that query is going to be cached. It's going to mm -hmm. like WordPress in, inherently caches its queries anyways. Um, so you're not it's like you're probably not even hitting the database on every single page. You're probably just getting a cache version of that. I mean, not hitting the databases. If you have if using a transient API and you don't have object cache, then that's you're hitting you're hitting uh, the the database, but um, you're not rebuilding that query every single every single time. I'm no. just wondering what the motivation is behind that question. I'm wondering, did Lisa, maybe she can explain, did you actually yeah. encounter a problem? Is that why you're asking the question? In which case, what kind of problem did you encounter? Uh, yeah, that would be good to know. Like, um, add to the query queries on the page, yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember, uh, I mean, even before blocks, uh, that was a common question with and just theme development. Like, people would have front pages with, like, you know seven or eight sections they'd each have their own query and that uh i don't think that was really ever a, a major problem um yeah i was more worried about like uh you got 150 images on the front page than uh you know the query aspect of that um so like all right so uh, derek uh as are there there are plans to add responsive controls to certain blocks like columns Ooh, oh boy right now they just collapse <laughs> automatically yeah, uh, i need to ask <laughs> yeah uh i agree that having responsive controls like that uh, like in the other page builders can overcomplicate the experience and goes against the gutenberg aims too however that's something and i and probably more does find a uh, limitate limit limiting uh yeah, uh, if you did catch uh, uh, catch it, I wrote about that on the uh, developer blog. Uh, I think it was last last Thursday. It's, it's probably the mo one of the most recent articles still. Uh, the, uh, yeah, so this is a hot topic. Uh, I think I was fielding question uh, comments and Twitter responses for an entire day. Um, all right, so uh, the 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 goal right now is to start off and like this intrinsic design mindset like what can or what can we do to not like what are the uh how can we lay out blocks without these extra controls like just automatically what what uh methods can we use to do this like get this foundation in place uh and then kind of to, then uh figure out what controls we need on top of that um so like i feel like the columns block like that's one area that really needs some more like fine-tuned uh control I, I think some you may have mentioned that one specifically um because it's just impossible to lay out every you know permutation of that uh you know easily uh with just intrinsic design methods or um because you just don't know what uh what the use case is uh beforehand so but I think for a lot of the blocks, that's okay. We don't need uh, these responsive controls necessarily. Um, because uh, as developers, we don't know how the user is going to stick something and where it's going. Uh, so we want that experience to be really great. Like if a user sticks, you know, an image somewhere, we just want it to work. Is it in a sidebar? Is it in a footer, header, you know, post content? Uh, and the same with other blocks. Um, and uh, yeah, so like kind of, and then then there's the UI aspect uh, also. 
um, like you, you keep you start adding a lot of controls it's obviously kind of clutters things up and it become it can become more confusing so um you have to like tread carefully uh when uh, building that um because once you put it in you have this technical debt that's that that you can't get rid of for years um and uh that's even less fun sometimes um so um did that kind of address what you were asking well or do you have a yeah i i do want to mention one thing though and which may or may not be part of D derek's question is that in gutenberg right now there are media queries for certain blocks like mm -hmm. media and text columns i was actually talking about this yeah i was actually talking about this with some other contributors like they do exist so what if your breakpoints for mobile is you want it to be 500 instead of 600 or whatever yeah. um overriding that with css right now is really the only option um i think it'd be great if you if there if there are breakpoints ideally those will go away but if they have to be there there would be some way of setting them in theme.json or something for the blocks that currently have them but yeah yeah, I definitely yeah, that, agree. That um, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The navigation block is one that I, I, I just want to override all of it, uh, and uh, like I just want some filters or some uh, configurations to do that. Um, yeah, but those conversations are happening, uh, and there are tickets. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tickets where they're happening, and yeah, I mean constant feedback in those uh, or continued feedback, not constant, but. Uh, is definitely uh something that we should all be doing um like share our like specific use cases like here's what we need to do and we can't do it right now um like we need to come up with the solutions together <clears throat> all right uh so lisa says she has some unexpected responsive behavior of a roadblock uh plus images then i changed the columns and it seemed to work smoother uh that's not the answer for all situations, but great. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are columns block on, are they a flex box control now? Or is they, or I know the roadblock is, um, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking of asking Nick a little bit, cause he might know, uh, putting me on the spot here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was looking at you on my screen, though, even though you don't know, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> I was like Nick answer this. Uh, just, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes you just have to change the blocks. Uh, row, row, and columns are similar in some ways, and yeah, they have some differences too. Yeah, it just depends on the use case. All right. Uh, but yeah, we'll jump on uh, to. Uh, uh, Victor has uh, something else uh, on the NPM problem with block dev tu tutorial. I ran into a problem when I used the local shell. It's a PHP shell for WP CLI. Make sure make sure you use a regular system terminal for running NPM with full access to node environment. That's a lot of big word, <laughs> words to say out loud. Okay. Uh, I'm um, sorry. When I, in, in two seconds, uh, I'm referring to the question that uh, Derek was asking. When uh, I was doing the same course, uh, I, I, you know, I had a local instance running and I used, you know, I had open a shell that I had, you know, you know how local that you open a, a local shell, mm -hmm. right? Uh, now that was just, could not run the NPM install well uh, due to the fact that it has its own custom little environment, right? Um, so um, when I, I got it going was when I just opened a regular shell um, a change directory to where the uh, the the block plugin directory development was. Then npm install ran fine because he could find the version of npm I was actually running on my machine. But if when I was using the now I'm just mentioning it because it might be a problem for a lot of people because everybody seems to be using local right to just to to whip up a, a WordPress. So you, then you're trying to do some uh, block development and uh, the, the the local shell does not look like it's uh, idoneous for that 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 was my comment okay thanks yeah am i the only one who doesn't use local 
or I don't know. I'm like I'm still old school, like Zamp, half the time. So uh, just uh, like my simple ways of doing things. It's a good call out though, because even though locals a third party entity, so many people use it now. Mm-hmm. And if you go through like the documentation on like setting up an environment, there's like one little snippet on local, and then there's like, a lot on Docker and like WP EMV. So like it may make sense to have a more robust section on local given how many people use it. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at in the chat too for people who are unfamiliar with it. Yeah. Oh, VVV. Wow. That's, I don't, I don't think it works on <laughs> M1 Max anymore or M2 Max now. Maybe, maybe they just updated that because yeah, VVV, that was the, that was my jam back in the day. I used to do that all the time. It's great. All right. Uh, what yeah, is we this still this plugin that Victor's uh, mentioning. Uh, I don't know. I vaguely recall hearing about it. I don't know. Uh, Victor, do you want to? Do you mind chiming in about what the Atlas plugin is? Uh, sure. Um, one of the things that attracts me to WordPress is that I can use it for projects that are, like you know, my wife's poetry uh, site on the one hand, and then when I have a web app that's you know big, uh, I can think in terms of doing headless uh, WordPress, right? So uh, local allows you to to um, you got you can um, put in the plugin the Atlas plugin by WP Engine, and that allows you to have, on the one hand, you know, just to play around with it. You don't it, it, what it gives you is a headless WordPress instance and a front end Faust JS instance. And the Faust is just a, a way of very easily using consuming the WP GraphQL. A plugin, you know, so you can get your data from WordPress very easily and you can get going. Um, they don't intend to monopolize. They say, you know, you can use any f- f- uh, framework you want. In fact, there's a video where you uh, can use Astro, you can use, uh, you know, Next, whatever you want. The point is that um, uh, it's not so easy. For example, I have my um, uh, WordPro on digital ocean in a droplet, you know, working and I, you know, I can, I can whip up a, a WordPress instance and then I got to whip up a reverse uh, in, engine X, yeah, you know, with local, you can just press a button and you've got a whole headless uh, a back end and front end you, you can start working with and playing around with. So, you know, it's, it's a very exciting thing. Um, I don't necessarily want to get, um, um, uh, caught up with just one approach to, to headless. But um, what's very exciting about WordPress is that you can actually think of it in many different ways. I can write my own React blocks and just use a web app in WordPress. And I can also say, okay, for this project, I'm going to make it a headless uh, you know, server, a CMS, and, uh, and I'm going to make my own front end in Svelte. You know, so, you know, that's, that's what's very attractive to me about this. Okay. So uh, that's just Mike. I don't know if anyone's interested in that. Yeah, no, I, I actually remember what it is now, now that we have the link and you, you started talking about it. Uh, it's like, it's one of those things I, I like completely escaped my mind uh, when it was mentioned in the chat. Uh, yeah, really neat uh, project there. Hmm. But yeah, we have like, you know, what, three or four minutes uh, left, I think. So like any, yeah. So we better get all the big questions out of the way before time's up. Uh, uh, Lisa, uh, this, oh, yeah. Go ahead, this, Sorry. go ahead. Yeah, Lisa asks, is this conversation a recurring weekly event or an occasional thing? Uh, it's uh, more of a monthly right now. Uh, yeah, somebody... I know we have a link on the, uh, do we put it on the WordPress core or uh, make core blog? There's one happening next month, uh, I believe. 
uh right now we had the we had one uh earlier this month this one and then there's one that's going to be more in the for the like asia pacific uh region like in terms of like time zone uh michael or is it ryan which and one of you two is co-hosting that i'm doing it with uh, jonathan bossinger the next okay one. yeah yeah we scheduled three originally we had one at, earlier this month which was for the EMEA time zones um then there's this one for the america's time zones and uh, at the this time next month on the 27th of march which is uh, for asia pacific time zones i just dropped the link into the chat uh, there. yeah you'd be yeah, me too and, um, <laughs> yeah and then so there's this initial three and then we'll look at scheduling some more we'll probably sch schedule another group and there will probably be some the, these initial three were scheduled for primarily for plugin developers interested in migrating a, a, a existing sort of short code or widget plugin to blocks yeah. Um, but there will also be some coming up for theme developers as well. Yeah. And even though I think we had that specific topic, I don't think either of the first two meetings have been like strictly about how about that. Uh, I don't yeah, know how much. Good. Yeah. So we like more I mean, on topic in the last one, but uh, this yeah. one is straight a bit, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay to ask not, uh, you know, off topic questions. I mean, it's great to have those conversations um yeah so uh yeah we'll just give everybody uh you know a last quick chance to uh you know ask any final questions or any or share any final thoughts um before we wrap this up one thing i do just want to say is we, as we're going to wrap up shortly there's lots of really useful links in the chat so this is your opportunity to save the chat yeah yeah is there a quick way to download it i know there is a google Meet. yeah if you go to the toolbar at the bottom of the chat there's a three three dots link and you can save the chat there mm. and so you can keep all those useful links for future reference ah okay that's good to know all right uh if there's nothing else uh I enjoyed like uh, having all of you here today. Um, some great topics, uh, and I got I got plenty of links. I, I'm really interested in reading the. Uh, we have one in the chat that we're not in Kansas anymore, or something. Our WordPress is not, so I'm, I just like the title, so I won't, I'm definitely going to read that. Uh, whoever shared, and uh, uh, but yeah, so y'all have a you know good rest of your day, uh, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. And uh, hope uh, hopefully y'all share show up for the next one. And yeah, so thanks, thanks guys, thanks everyone. Thanks. Go ahead and end it. Have a great day. Bye.